Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Melanie Okoro, and I am the CEO and co-founder of Eco Alpha. Now, one of the first questions you might ask yourself is where do I innovate within my business or organization? Are we keeping ourselves at the forefront of the changes that are happening in our industry? And how are we, as a business or organization, being competitive, right? Are we meeting our capabilities? Are we thinking about what's going to happen around the next corner and the next corner and the next corner? Me and my team actually think about those questions quite a bit. So today, you're not going to hear from me a lot of jargon. But what you will hear from me are examples told through storytelling. I'm going to share with you how we build a culture of bold and disruptive thinking, which ultimately change how we lead, innovate, and transform companies in the 21st century. Now, we all know these two companies, or maybe even three, Amazon, Netflix, and Starbucks. But soon we want you to recognize Eco Alpha. You know that Amazon is known for changing the way we do our online purchasing, right? Netflix for how we rent and stream content. But you know, one of the most important things to think about in a company is disruptive innovation, which is essentially the use of technology rather than the technology itself, OK? So there are many different ways that we can innovate throughout a company. But for smaller companies like Eco Alpha, it becomes the linchpin for us. It really defines how we outcompete our competitors in the marketplace. It allows us to target a segment of the population that's been traditionally overlooked, to deliver an alternative that's superior, either customized or tailored, typically at a lower price point. But what it does is sets a company apart. Now, um, disruptive thinking, I think, is in my DNA. Um, it's a common thread that you'll see in my personal and professional career. Um, some, if they describe me, would say I'm fiercely competitive, I'm persistent and tenacious. Others would describe me as a person that loves to be a part of teams to solve problems, right? To bring new products, programs, and solutions to bear in the marketplace. I will tell you that I pride myself on the opportunities and challenges that I've had as a graduate student here at UMBC to look at problems such as water in the urban environment. But also, my time at NOAA, when I was a part of a team faced with a challenge to recover threatened and endangered species. And so, there are many opportunities yeah, throughout my life to come to a crossword a decision-making point where I have to decide where I want to stay the course or I want to be challenged in a new way. And I think as a leader of any organization or any business or company, you're always having to make that decision, that decision to disrupt or not. So I wanted to share with you a few key strategies for disruptive thinking in your organization and your company. One of the first ones I want to talk about is knowing the right time to pivot, when to disrupt. Are there signals in the marketplace that give you insight onto what's happening around the corner in your industry? Are you having those innovative moments within your organization or business? And if so, are you identifying those innovative challenges? And, and guess what? Don't be afraid to fail because it will happen, and you will learn from that. But you got to have the right problem solvers, right? You got to have an agile team to help you execute uh, your vision all the way to the end. So, I'd like to share with you an example of how Eco Alpha decided to take a really big, bold swing at building new programs, right? Thinking about how to target a specific population in need, but having impact in our community. And that is the Energy Bearing Program. 
In this particular program, my team and I had to do a couple different things. We had to first listen to our community, we had to listen to our clients, we had to listen to our employees, and then we had to create and collaborate. And we came up with the Energy Baron program. Now this pro program was wrought with some innovative challenges. It was birthed during COVID, when a lot of individuals in impoverished communities were experiencing job equity and no access to opportunities. This program solved the problem. It allowed individuals in a segment of the population to have workforce development opportunities that were focused in the energy sector. But it also provided leadership and sustainability and innovation into an area where, quite frankly, no one was looking. It allowed Eco Alpha to know when to pivot during COVID, recognize our innovative moments, and identify those tough challenges. Well, I promise not to put you know, data on the screen, but I love data because at the core, I'm a research scientist, okay? And so at Eco Alpha, we let data lead the way for us. And then we use that data to develop our operational plans. So I'm gonna tell you, you have to be in love, in love with data. You have to embrace it. So one of the things we like to do is we like to analyze the data that we have. We create a statement plan and then we're not afraid to challenge the status quo. I'd also like to share another great example. I got a couple of them, so just, just hang tight here. Um, this is the High Performance Building Engineering Program. This is an example of how Eco Alpha used digital transformation to outcompete and stay innovative in the marketplace. We had a couple of dish issues we were dealing with. First, we had our clients come to us and tell us, listen, as engineers in the industry, we can't recruit, we have a poor pipeline, we have competition from the private sector with regards to wage and labor, and oh, by the way, the industry's changing. There are new technologies and facilities operation, such as energy management and building automation and sustainability. Can you help us train our engineers or upskill them for the future of the workforce. You know, I turned to my team and I asked, could we do that? And they said, absolutely. So we embarked on this ambitious project and we succeeded. We implemented a program that was first customizable. It was easy to use. It did not violate the principles of adult learning, right? Well, it turns out that the engineers really loved it because they could take training anywhere anytime on their own time, right? It essentially freed them up to do what they really wanted to do. And you know, I don't know anyone who's in, who enjoys going to a training. But for us, it was a game changer. It allowed us to increase our customer base, grow our market share, but also uh, it allows us to be and have a distinct place in a unique place in the market. So, we can't do it without building agile teams. And anytime you're trying to innovate, grow and change, you need to assess whether you have the teams that will help you get there, right? So for us, when we think about building agile teams, we don't just think about a traditional organizational structure. It's not flat. For us, it's more like a matrix set across a problem to solve, okay? And so when we think about building teams, we think about building teams that understand the pace of the work, uh, that understand that there is going to be diversity of thought. So we ask them to bring their disciplines to the table. We also understand that it has to be a really good fit so that we make sure we have a team that understands and listens what is really, really to challenge the status quo. Another thing that's really important as a leader, um, I want to be challenged. Our leadership wants to be challenged. So we think about building teams where they're challenging leadership. My goal is to manage the shortfalls of that and hold them accountable. Also, when I think about building teams, I actually always go back to uh, three things. The value, the culture, and the performance of my organization. 
What do I want it to look like? What do I want it to reflect? So I'm always talking with our team about how we can highlight our team members. We want to build a rich culture and environment so that we can drive growth and change within our organization. So I want to share with you a one minute slide about some of the exciting things that we're doing within Eco Alpha. Um, I hope you enjoy. It's no secret that today's high performance facilities require well-trained, high performance building engineers to manage them with excellence. That's why at EcoAlpha, we developed our high performance building engineering program to include 40 hours of dynamic in-class instruction, hands-on learning experiences, 16 hours of on-site training, with interactions with industry experts. I like to start at the middle. And face-to-face -face support. Our program is perfect for new and seasoned engineers to learn new skills and to reinforce the best management practices. How to perform basic functions on key pieces of equipment. Current technologies, and other topics including mechanical, electrical, compliance, building automation systems, and energy management. The Eco Alpha High Performance Building Engineering Program is high energy, multifaceted, and practical for immediate use in today's ever-evolving facilities. And our students agree. So this really did have a, a good all-around value. You put it in a currency, you're walking out with a fat wallet. I love the interaction with the uh, instructors. We cover a wide variety of topics that apply to what we do as stationary engineers and even as chief engineers. I wish I would have did this years back. They are really informative and they bring everything back and they explain it so simple that you can understand it. Brought to light a lot of situations that we have experienced even before this class that I actually got a lot of answers to that I hadn't had before. They made it real, you know, walking around the building that we're in and, and we get the information off this existing building and we apply it here and, you know, we get to see uh, some of the uh, issues here at the building and, you know, we talk about how some of those can be uh, remedied and you know, we also see the things that are working, most of the things that are working right here and, and we get to learn off of that. As you can see, at Eco Alpha, we're training for the future of engineering. So if I could leave you with uh, one thought today, it's to be bold. Be bold in your leadership. Be aware of the obstacles that are in front of you. Um, lead, learn, and listen. Um, and mostly do that with your heart because um, I have to do that a lot um, and disrupt unapologetically. Thank you. <laughs>